J. Thomas, Tommy Evans, grew up poor during the Great Depression. 
When he was in second and third grade, he and his best friend Dick Welch worked in the school cafeteria in order to earn their lunch. At times, Tommy would bring a cold potato from home in his pocket to supplement his earned lunch. Tommy was the youngest of six siblings. He lived by himself when his parents moved to California to mine gold. He wanted to finish his education and high school wrestling at Will Rogers. He worked in a grocery store to pay his rent. Tommy was a two-time state champion wrestler for Will Rogers High School, graduating with the class of 1949. He wasn't offered a scholarship to OU, so he drove down and talked to legendary coach Port Robertson into giving him one. Port became Tommy's father figure from that day on. He then went on to a stellar career at the University of Oklahoma, compiling a 42-1 and record. His only loss came as a sophomore in the 1951 NCAA Finals. He then went on to become NCAA champion in 1952 and 1954, being named Outstanding Wrestler of the Tournament both years. He won three AAU national titles as well as a Pan American Games gold medal. While still in college, Tommy wrestled in the Helsinki Olympic Games, winning a silver medal. He again competed in the 1956 Games in Melbourne in both freestyle and Greco-Roman, a feat rarely accomplished. After his competition days were over, Tommy excelled as a coach at the University of Oklahoma. He coached the Sooners to an NCAA National Championship in his first season in 1960. At the time, he was the first person in NCAA history to lead a team to the national title in the first season as head coach. Tommy was recalled to active duty in the fall of 1961 and served 10 months as a captain in the Air Force. He served in both the Air Force and Army as a pilot and later as a flight instructor with the Oklahoma Air National Guard. While serving in the military, a major at the time, Tommy was flying a plane from Norman to Oklahoma City the day after coaching the OU-OSU Bedlam wrestling match. OU was beaten badly. Two guys in the back of the plane were big time OSU fans and one started spouting off about how OSU kicked OU's tail the night before in Norman. As his son Brian tells it, On their Sunday army duty, uh, George Drosser, which is the guy that told me this story, was in the co-pilot seat. Dad was flying the plane and there was two guys in the back. The two guys in the back were big OSU fans. I mean big, big, big. And uh, George and my dad were big OU fan. Of course, Dad was the coach there. The guy in the back, he was what George said. He was about six four, about two forty. My dad's about five six, probably one hundred sixty pounds. And uh, he just kept raving and raving. He said, "You see those Aggies beat those Sooners." He said, "Those Sooners just are terrible. They need to fire that coach down there." And I don't know, I don't know. And uh, you can imagine that just, my dad's blood was probably about to boil. And of course he's flying a plane. You don't want to hack off a guy that's in control, in control of your life. But uh, George was just having a, he was having a good old time. He was just about to die laughing. And he turned around that guy. Of course my dad, here he is with cauliflower ears, broken nose. I mean, you gotta, you gotta at least look at him and know this guy was a wrestler at some point. And he turned around that big old boy and he said, hey, this guy's a big Sooner fan right here. Do you think you can whoop him? And he said, oh yeah, that's a piece of cake. He said, all right, we, we land, we'll get on the tarmac. You guys can get after it. Well, they get out of the plane, get it all tied down. Dad and this guy get after it. Dad headlocks him, gets him down, holds him down with one arm and is waving at everybody else that are standing around watching all this with the other arm. So. I think that was a, a little bit of a uh, gift to him that, you know, after getting beat by OSU, he at least got somebody down from OSU and had him on their back. Tommy returned to the Sooner coaching staff in the fall of 1962 and won another national title later that season. In his 12-year OU career, his Sooners finished in the top three seven times and his teams never finished lower than sixth. He coached 30 individual conference champions and 16 individual national champions, a record for Sooners wrestling coaches. Tommy produced 56 NCAA All-Americans in his 12-year career 
including seven three-time honorees and ten two-time All-Americans. He was named College Wrestling Coach of the Year in 1963 and was inducted into the Helms Foundation Hall of Fame in 1965. In 1968, Tommy was named Amateur Wrestling's Man of the Year. He was inducted as a member of the Charter Class into the National Wrestling Hall of Fame in 1976, earning the honor as wrestler and also as a coach. After he retired, he returned to Tulsa and volunteered to help with the Little League Wrestling. As son Brian tells it, the person in charge had a meeting with all the volunteers to get an idea on how to structure the new wrestling program. All of the guys sat at the table. Each person would talk about their wrestling experience. Things like, I took third in state in 73, or I was a state champ. They went around to dad and no one even knew who he was. Although he had cauliflower ears and a broken nose, you would think this guy was somewhat of a wrestler. And dad said, well, I won two national championships, two outstanding wrestlers, uh, coached the University of Oklahoma to two national championships, won two outstanding wrestlers, first seven inducted in the Wrestling Hall of Fame, and on and on and on. And uh, they all looked at each other and couldn't believe that they didn't even know who he was. That's the kind of guy my dad was. He never really touted on anything he's ever done. He always talked about the small things in life that do make us happy. Tommy died on March 18, 2008 and was posthumously inducted into the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame in 2011. And now, ladies and gentlemen, accepting for her father, please welcome Sherry Trammell. Thank you so much. 